at first I thought, you know, this is this is bad, but it, it can't get that much worse, can it? Can it, Corey? Well, <laughs> here's where things get complicated with me. Now, I want everybody to hear me out before anybody starts saying anything, because y'all will hear one word and you will get triggered and y'all will start raising hell. I want you to hear me out. Hey everyone, Double Toasted Live in Los Angeles is right around the corner. Saturday, April 27th, 8 p.m. show at the El Portal Theater for a night of comedy, games, and that after party. Now, here's the thing. There are less than 35 tickets available for this show, which means that it will most likely sell out. So get your tickets by going over to DTMerch.com. Click that banner in the middle of the page. It will take you to X1Entertainment.com, or you can just go to X1Entertainment.com. We can get your all-access VIP and general admission tickets. But if you get the all-access and VIP, there are many perks included with that, including the price of our after party being included in the price of the all access and VIP tickets. Or if you just like to buy a ticket for the after party, you can go to Double Toasted Live in LA after party. It will take you to our Eventbrite page right there. And either way, whatever you're gonna do, we're looking forward to hanging with you soon in LA and we will see you soon. Thank you. Martin. Yes. Martin hates when people say, man, you my childhood. That's smart. So that's always an over-exaggeration. But in this case, Martin, I think that the, your childhood <laughs> and you would <laughs> rape these people too. People, this is the cast of the original Good Times, a show that came out 50 years ago. 1974 is when it premiered. Lasted five seasons, I think till 1979, where some people said we well, should have just left it there. Mm. But in today's entertainment environment, no one can leave well enough alone. <laughs> They're going to take something of yours and shit on it, too, whether you like it or not. So all you fans of good times out there, they, they, you're saying that's exactly what's happening right here. You thought you were safe. Yeah, ain't nobody safe. There's money to be made. Everybody's childhood out here. Bent over. Yeah, bent over, just getting it. Yeah, somehow, someway. Now, it's one thing to make a reboot of something or a remake of something or even a reimagining of something. And then there's <laughs> this. I have important news. Let me guess. The state called and they want to cut you a disability check for your face. What the f is that? <laughs> Some people are saying, people, this is the animated sequel, spiritual successor reimagining of the original <laughs> good times right there. He went from this to this. <laughs> we all looking like that, huh? <laughs> Even the characters in the show confused. How'd I get here? Why am I here? What is this all about? Yeah, people, this is Netflix decided to do a reimagining a reboot sequel of good times in a way where they say, hey, listen, why just anybody can, can do you know, just a straight up remake. Or no, they can't. no, they can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, they can't. We got, we doing something different. We, th this is something from back in the day where they had sitcoms. They have this today still. You know, you watch the Big Bang Theory, all that. They say, hey, look, you, you see every, you see every wall in the house except that fourth wall. Mm -hmm. But animation's mm -hmm. going, <laughs> we going to break that fourth wall and go right up your ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can get paid for that. But the truth is, we're the Evans of new. <laughs> <laughs> good times. Good, good times, huh? That's what yeah, they yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, but you having good times? Uh, well, that trailer it cut part of the title, right? Because it's called Good Times. Yeah, black Bl again. Black again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> did I have a good time? That's complicated, Martin. That's a, Martin's like, no, it's not. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sounds man. like a yes or no question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have a good time or not? You know, it's, it's 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 it is a little complicated with me. And I did watch all ten episodes. Yes, That's ten right. people. Ten. Yep. I thought it was eight. No, no, they should have been eight. Oh yeah, it should have been two. Oh uh, Martin, it should have been none maybe. But it is here. Everybody does eight. Why are they doing ten? <laughs> Because they want your ass to suffer. That's yeah, why. I guess so. You're gonna, you talking about taking your childhood and bending over. We're going to give it to you good. <laughs> a couple of extra episodes up in there. <laughs> um, so uh, the premise with this, let's start out with the premise with, of the Owen. The premise of the Owen, Good Times produced by 
producer named Norman Lear, who was also a producer on here, even though he was he's dead now, he was a hundred years old. I can tell you, he didn't know what the hell he was doing. No, they just no. put his name on here because he, you know, still had the rights to the old yeah. times. They, they shit. They just they just asking, can we put your name on this? Okay, it's <laughs> probably somebody in his family. <laughs> yeah. Well, he makes an appearance in here, so yeah. he does a little cameo, but. He, uh, Norman Lear produced this show, and it's a historic show because it shows the first black family on television that, you know, where it's a two-parent household, and it was a show where it's about black pride. You know, it's uh, everyone in here, they were not really a stereotype, you know, they were, but they were the, there was a constant struggle to get out the ghetto, but by, but by uh, 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 you know, well-to-do means, education. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. No, they had pride in the face of adversity. Yeah. A lot of adversity. Yeah. The, J.J. They, was a great artist on, on his way to be a successful artist. Thelma, the, the daughter, she was uh, studying to be a surgeon. Michael wanted to be the first black man on this, or I guess the second at this point on the Supreme Court. Uh, and you had uh, 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 Florida, Florida, <laughs> this is in Florida and James, the parents. Uh, who, even though they were blue class working people, they always were great parents and were always on their kids' ass to do the straight and narrow thing. Don't get caught up in all the other things in the ghetto, which you hardly ever saw. Mm -hmm. There was hardly any stereotypes on the show, and you know there was hardly any, you know, anything that had to do with you know drug dealing, pimping, gang banging, anything like that. You they had, certainly didn't glorify it. And they didn't glorify. You had the certain episode where they made a point of it because it exists in the ghetto. And then what happens when it comes in a uh, 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 conflict with this family? That's probably the only time that you saw that kind of stuff. Mostly they were sitting on the family right there. Oh, well, that has changed in the last over the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. So this new family, they are they, they are descendants of the Evans family. Uh, and as you can see, uh, even though they were trying to get out the projects, they never made it. Nope. In fact, they, they never even made it out that apartment. <laughs> right. They're still in apartment 17C. <laughs> Apparently, we went through a couple of generations that never left that room. <laughs> that is Reggie is James' grandson. He's, uh, he's a cab driver that's raising his family in the very same place his grandfather did. He's doing the best he can to survive the trials and tribulations of their Chicago high-rise ghetto, which over the years... Boy, a lot, a lot has changed. Uh, in addition to the gangs, crackheads, and single mamas and hoochie mamas and hood rats being more prominent, uh, now they get visits from Elon Musk and Jesus. They got talking cockroaches, gunslinging rats, evil clowns, and as you heard, drug dealing babies. <laughs> Boy, a lot has changed in the last 50 years and not for the best. <laughs> and you look at this like, damn, is this, is this good times or fallout? <laughs> you know this? Did they drop a nuclear bomb and we have all these mutants now running around? What the hell is going on? Kinda. Yeah, what the f is going on with this, man? And as the voices, you know, they got some uh, pretty popular uh, black celebrities and actors. Uh, J.B. Smoove. Smoove does uh, the voice of Reggie. Uh, the wife. Oh, what's the wife's name? Beverly, Yvette Nicole Brown. The daughter is voiced by Marseille Martin. Jay Farrow is junior. And Gerald Slink Johnson, who's known for doing voices for video game characters, at least Lamar from Grand Theft Auto. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Grand Theft Auto 5. But he's all, he was also Black Jesus. He's the voice of, uh, of the baby. Deshaun, whatever the baby. I thought I recognized his voice. Yeah. And then you got other people who appear here who are also known for doing very famous voices for characters. Uh, Gary Anthony Williams, Phil Lamar. Uh, Tisha Campbell comes in, does a voice. Lil Ray Howard, Howery does a voice. And then you have some people who have made appearances like J.J. Uh, uh, Walker, Jimmy Walker mm -hmm. has a cameo here, even though I never saw it or found it, did you? No. Uh, Bernard, I was too baffled. Yeah, Bernadette Standards. Standards. Standards, something Standards. Anyway, Bernadette Standards comes in, does a voice. So the, the, J.J. and Bernadette are the people from the original show. They were J.J. from the show and Thelma. Um, so, uh, thoughts, y'all? <laughs> cool. Please. Listen, uh, I don't have as much information as you guys. Friday night, I turned it on mm -hmm. and I got two episodes in and I was just like, that's about all I can take. <laughs> <laughs> just judging as a cartoon, it is indicative of all of these 
uh, adult cartoons that Netflix has, where it's just a lot of loud, uh, a lot of yelling mm -hmm. and a lot of cussing and shock value comedy. How offensive can we be? Mm -hmm. Quickly moving from one thing to the next. Never get attached to any of the characters. Uh, this one just has the extra disadvantage of having really shoddy animation. Every th these two episodes feel like the same episode. And it's just all the same thing. And there's nothing attracting me to come back to this. Yeah. Yeah, I've been a part of small productions that were animated, you know, and they didn't look amazing, but they had way more character than this. Mm -hmm. And they look like they give a shit more than this. I know how we like to be kind of ambiguous about how we feel about these things when we give our initial thoughts. And I'll just say, uh, look, I didn't care for this. Uh, I, I have no affinity for Good Times. I didn't grow up with it. I've, I've seen very little of it. But even having seen none of that original show, watching this, I'll just say this did not appeal very much to me. But I watched all 10 episodes. And at first, I thought, you know, this is... This is bad, but it, it can't get that much worse, can it? Can it, Corey? Well, <laughs> here's where things get complicated with me. Now, I want everybody to hear me out before anybody starts saying anything, because y'all will hear one word and you will get triggered and y'all will start raising hell. I want you to hear me out. I actually thought it got better as it went along. Now, as I said, before anybody gets mad, listen to the whole discussion. Because some of y'all are ready. You know, no, huh? okay. <laughs> <laughs> this table's so heavy. <laughs> no, listen, hear me out. Hear me out. Listen to the whole discussion. I didn't hate this as much as I thought I would. Mm -hmm. I am very disappointed and I am angry at certain things in here. But I have things to say about this that I thought that I thought I would not say. Whatever hate that this show is getting is well deserved. All right. Uh, the biggest problem with this is that it is called Good Times. Yeah, it didn't right? remind me of Good Times. It I is called this original show right here, and it has nothing, nothing to do with that original show right there, other than. They live in the projects in that black. Mm -hmm. I don't give a how much you drop James's name and right, say how right. they're related and making as many references. It has nothing to do with that. All right. And I have a big problem with that because that means that they are just using the name yeah. for publicity. Mm -hmm. That's all you're doing. You can change the name of this show and you would not make one goddamn difference at all. At all. At all. Agreed. You know, uh, I, like I said, this, if you watch the original show, these characters, I mean, they none of them even behave like these characters in the original show. None of them have the same, you know, there's, there's, not, this, there's, there's not the same tone there mm -hmm. as the original show. And I know this is animation, but just call it something different. It's not, if you watch, for, you don't know, what the, you don't, you've never seen the original show. Nope. If you, I'll just give you a little, a little example. You can see this. I mean, and, and, and being in animation is no excuse. You could capture a little bit of what they were doing with that original show, but it is not that at all. Well, if y'all excuse me, I gotta get ready for work. Strutting like a peacock. Why not, baby? He ain't short on him. Oh, damn. You know, they, they, there was actual warmth and love and, you know, and, and maybe animation is not the thing for that unless they really just kind of really, really, really think it through because you're not capturing that, 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 that human interaction. No that these characters had. You know what no. I'm saying? Yeah, no, I know exact, that's exactly what I'm talking about. It's, it, there's, um, no, 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 there's, there's no subtlety, there's no interaction. It's just people yelling. Yeah, these characters are so exaggerated, these characters are so wild that they, they, they're kind of missing what was important to the show, and that was the chemistry and love and support that these characters gave each other. That's, these characters are just here for the jokes, and Netflix is probably happy that they get all this negative publicity because when they put that trailer out, they tore that ass up. And Netflix mm -hmm. is probably like, good. You know, that's exactly what we wanted. They probably called it good times just to piss people off. <laughs> right. I, I know they did. Yeah. I know they did. Right. Somebody had to show it. It's like, what if you called it good times? I'm like, mm -hmm. well, I, I wouldn't think we could. No, call it good times. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I watch good times every night almost. 
and it, and I can tell you that like, like they didn't they didn't care to capture one essence of that original show except for like name dropping mm -hmm. every now and then. So it deserves all the hate it gets on that alone right there. Uh, another big problem that's bringing the well deserved hate with this is that that trailer was terrible marketing. That trailer was awful marketing. That's why I say they must have, they really must have been, uh, Netflix, okay, that's one thing to try to put this out here. Maybe, and maybe rub people the wrong way, maybe try to get attention. But you know, I mean, there's black people behind this show. Yeah. All right, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's black people behind this show. And that trailer was using, the NAACP was 100% right. They, they, you know, they, they put out a column saying that, you know, you, whatever, regardless of the content of the show, which some people try to argue, wait, wait until you see the show. Regardless of the content of the show, the NAACP was saying this, and I agree. They said you use stereotypes to market this this show. Mm -hmm. and, and, and by the way, that marketing is a choice. <laughs> you know, a committee had to get together. People had to look at this, black and white and anything else. And y'all had to make that decision to put that out there, sell it this way. That thing was terrible. So, you know, I, I, again, I see the hate with this. But I will say this, I think I see, I don't know, you can call it irony, hypocrisy, whatever, but I'm, I'm gonna say this. I do think that if you took the, the name Good Times off of this and you put this on Adult Swim at 11 p.m. on Sundays under a different name, it wouldn't be getting the hate that it's getting right now. And this is not me defending this, by the way, because I, I think that some of the people who are complaining might have actually even come out and say, oh, I like this. Oh, this is edgy. Oh, or, or others wouldn't even notice it. That, well, that would be the thing. If you put it on Adult Swim without this name, it wouldn't get noticed. It wouldn't get the heat because nobody would, most people wouldn't even know it existed. Yeah. Yeah, like, are, are they'd watch it, or they'd be like, eh, whatever, you know, sure, whatever. Well, I, I pay attention to the Adult Swim animation and their stuff is really funny. and. I, I'm not going to say that this show was devoid of anything that made me laugh, but it was like once every other episode, there would be something that'd catch me off guard that would kind of make me giggle. But well, nothing that would make me laugh out loud. Well, you know, here, see, I'm saying that this would be on Adult Swim and some people who are complaining right now, I think that, yes, I'm not going to say you wouldn't even, I say some people even like it. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because the problem for me is I've always been uncomfortable with how black people are represented on Adult Swim. I think that, you know, I, I think that the way they portray black humor on there mm -hmm. has always been a problem with me. Hey, listen, I, I, I love the Boondocks as much as anybody else, but most of their shows, you know, but they, they pride themselves in being edgy, so they try to pull the edgy stuff out of us. Mm -hmm. So there's the overuse of the N-word, yeah. which I've always felt the Boondocks is. Boondocks is awesome. It's, a, it's an amazing show, but they use the, I think they use the N-word way too much on there. Uh, they rely on, on hood humor. Black Jesus, yeah, you know that's that's you know they they, we, they go back to our hood setting for for uh, to mine humor from that, or they use stereotypical characters. I know people love Black Dynamite. I'm you know I like Black Dynamite. I was a big fan of the movie. I watched the show. I think it's funny, but you know it still has uh, uh, pimps, you know, uh, uh, oh. gangsters and hoes on there. And you know I want you to compare how many images of black people on Adult Swim are not of the things that I've mentioned, and do the comparison to the things that are. I've always had a problem with Adult Swim doing this. Uh, but a lot of people, they you know, they like those shows. So that's why I say I don't think they see a problem with this right here. If it was under different names, I think Good Times is the one that's really pissing people off. Uh, although I would still have a problem with it. I can tell you that. I would be the one saying it. I think even for Adult Swim standards, the animation for this is pretty terrible. Like that was the thing that when it gets down to it, like shit is ugly. And it looks ugly the whole time. And some of the character designs are really awful, I thought. Well, you know, having said what I what I what I have to say, I said right now, I do have some positive things to say. Cause I want it to be as fair as possible. Listen, I watched all 10 episodes of this so I could be fair. I took a long walk. <laughs> and a long walk and a long talk with myself. I was walking down the street mumbling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like your roommate. Yeah. 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 Adam might have drove up beside me. <laughs> but I, I had a long talk with myself with this, man. And I have to say, you know, I, I, 
I, I don't want to be afraid to say it because there's so many people hating on this. They don't hear nothing but aggression. And I get that. And you didn't. It deserves it. But the positives that I see here is that it does get a little bit better. But you have to, to do that. You have to go through two episodes of getting your ass whooped. You have to go through two really bad episodes that they're, they're rough, they're painful. Is that the first two? Yeah, the first two. Okay, because that's where I was like, yeah, it, it beat me down. You, yeah, <laughs> it, because in the first two episodes, what happens with this is, you know, those are rough, boy. The first two episodes, that's where they, you know, that's that's where they uh, they have a lot of painful humor, including making, you know, so many references to the original uh, show. These are these the, the, the you know references that made me shudder, man. Reggie in the shower singing the theme song with a with a cockroach. Yeah, you know they got they quote stuff from uh from the the, the original theme song for jokes. You know they, they get flooded in the apartment and they're uh, the the super is like keeping your head over water and I'm just like oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You saw, yeah, you, you didn't see that yeah, part. Yeah, you didn't see that yeah. part. I you, saw it. You saw that part. I mean, it ends. Doesn't the first episode end with him going, "Damn, damn, damn"? It's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Someone, you know, you saw in the trailer, dynamite. You know, they, they, if you know the show, then you know. But they never, they never like reference. You know, they reference the old show for laughs and corny ass jokes. But they never, they never, you know, to, for them to be related to the old cast. Did JJ ever become a, a successful artist? Did Thelma become a surgeon? Did Michael become a politician? Who knows? You know, that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and all the sex stuff. Yeah, I know. It gets weird. Yeah, then you know what I'm saying? It was so many shots on on women's asses. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, they, the the you know, they they women's asses and 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 uh and and Women's titties, women's breasts. Uh, Bev, the, the 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 wife, you know, they had this running joke in the first episodes about her breasts start lactating whenever the drug dealing baby's around. And we're gonna talk about that baby in a little bit. You know, I got that was just that was cringy, man. I just rolling my eyes like, you know, just it's just not funny. Mm -mm. There just, was a lot of bizarre attempts to almost like be gross. I would say. Oh yeah, and and it. A lot of the stuff that it touches on, like there's some stuff, there's a germ of an idea yeah. that if they explored it right and wrote it better, it could have been something great. Yeah. But some of the stuff they do, they, they've already addressed it like in uh, Big Mouth, stuff yeah. like that. Well, and they did it way better. And there. the first two episodes, they didn't seem interested in exploring anything. Mm -mm. It was just move to the next thing, move to the next thing, move to the next thing. Yep. No, Mark, you're right. That's another thing. I don't think the first two episodes are saying anything. You know, it, it's what you said. This is this reminds me of the era of like. Spike TV when they were trying to be too edgy with adult and when HBO was trying to be real edgy or even when after The Simpsons came out, uh, you know, he had everybody trying to do adult animation and just not doing it. They didn't get it. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand yeah. what's yeah. making The Simpsons. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, exactly. A lot of shows that followed The Simpsons and they'd come on and it'd be like, I'm not watching this. You <laughs> <laughs> You're like, OK, Bob's Burgers, King of the Hill. They got it. Yes. These, these other things like. Okay, you guys got three weeks before they move you, and I'm just gonna wait you out. Bob, I'm gonna tell you, Bob's Burgers is a better remake of Good Times than this is right here. Oh, brilliant by yeah. comparison. No, I, I, and I and let me say something else. That uh, the animation didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Uh, in the beginning, it did, and I and overall, uh, yeah, I wish they should have. I wish they could have done more. I mean, they should have done more. But I have seen shows where they've done this kind of style of animation, and I've seen anime where they've done it. And actually, they did some pretty creative things as the episodes went on. They took different styles on for one ep episode. There's a there's a heat wave going on in Chicago, and the wow. sun is beating down on people, and they do some really funny jokes with that visual jokes. I thought, you know, as far as animation with it, yeah, it's not great, but it didn't it didn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Uh, now, the, the reason why those two episodes are really bad is because, as I say, you know, they, re they keep referencing the old show. Mm -hmm. And, they, and they, they have nothing to say. It's about the third episode where it stops referencing the original and starts to kind of be its own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't, yeah, they just stop. Every now and then you might hear the theme song play, but then they, they, you know, they stop talking about it. And it does become a crazy ass adult swim show. Uh, in the, in, when we're talking about you know, the, the first two episodes and saying anything, they start picking up on the social commentary about the third episode. Okay. You know, like, uh, and they go into a lot of social commentary. They talk about gentrification. They talk about gun violence, how guns are, and, and, and drugs are pumped into the communities because of the system. You know, police brutality, exploitation of black people. 
Uh, they even comment on, you know, the <laughs> they talk about the exploitation of black people. Yeah, okay. yeah, that, which is the funny <laughs> thing here, because they talk about the sexualized images of black women, even as they continue to kind of constantly show it in this. <laughs> and of course, as I said, the drug dealing baby, which we'll talk about in a little bit. But the social commentary works. It works a few times because what they what they do is they get surreal with it. You know, they stop being, they stop trying to like reference good times and they stop, you know, uh, just floundering with these lame ass jokes and they actually start to say something and they get surreal. They, they take advantage of the animation. Okay. Things get crazy. And, uh, you know, that's where you start to enter like almost like boondocks type territory, but even more exaggerated. You know, we, like we see them bringing the guns into the community and whatnot, but then they exaggerate even more. Uh, the third episode, Gray, the daughter, she gets her, she gets a period. And show you Gray, the daughter, right here. You know, this is this is not the best image, but this is one of the episode they're talking about the sexualization of black women's bodies right here. Mm -hmm. She gets a period, and she uh, and they do a parody of the Wiz. And there's some, there, you know, there's a little clever moments in there. I thought, you know, nothing that made me laugh out loud, but I was like, all right, you know what? They they there are moments there where you thought about this. Uh, Bev, the the the, uh, the 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 wife. She has this whole story arc where she is uh, she's running for the uh, projects committee. And they talk about how, you know, the uh, the committee has corrupted her, you know, uh, and they show how like everybody's in on it, like black and white working together to keep these people oppressed. You know, I thought that was kind of funny right there. And Junior, the voice, the, the, the character is voiced by uh, Jay Farrow. That's that's him right here. Uh, they do like a inside out thing. They talk about how kids have this over-reliance on drugs mm -hmm. to keep them uh, focused, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he has the same thing. Oh, wait, I did see that. Maybe it, I did it, see Watch, Watch the Real, where he had this other multi muscular entity. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And, like it's like, and they do an in and, uh, inside out thing. Okay. Yeah. And well, even maybe. one of the characters escapes through from his head and yeah, goes on yeah, a rampage yeah. or something. Okay, I guess I saw three episodes. You know, I, I thought, all right, you know, you, it, when it's surreal, at least for me, you know, it worked. And there was probably a couple of times I laughed out loud. There was uh, a point where uh, Reggie is in his car and people keep stiffing him. They had a couple of people that ran out of his cab and, I was, and one of them had me laughing really hard. Um, Something with the car had me laughing a well, little what bit. What was that? When uh, the episode with Elon Musk, when the robot car came up beside him, it's like uh, the guy was doing like a Jay-Z impression. He just goes, a vroom, and then drives away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that made me laugh. But a lot of the other stuff, like the, it just didn't hit for me. But the thing that I can say that's positive is these voice actors are incredibly talented. Yeah, J.B. Yeah. Smooth can really make something out of nothing. And, and he's trying, but it wasn't working for me. But I just felt like it kept falling back on like these bizarre racist stereotypes. It's like, oh, we're gonna help get your kid drugs, but you're black, so you go to like the crack house to get your drugs. It's like, yeah, that, that's kind of weird. No, see, that's the problem with this. These positives, they don't last the whole series. <laughs> you know, maybe you should have stopped at eight because the last two episodes, that's, it was like, well, I don't even know doing anymore like uh -huh. the i mean and this this ends terribly i'll tell you about that a little bit uh you know any good writing that was in this and there i thought you know there were some moments where there was some good writing there's good yeah. ideas yeah and i I just, I just thought that they you know some things like i said i was entertained by some things they did but any good writing that that is there it starts to fall apart quickly and some of these arcs are poorly written boy um uh, they get up. yeah they got so they got one episode where Ju Junior's arc, his story arc, uh, makes no sense at all. They got one episode where he's a superhero fighting hood violence. The very next episode, he joins the gang and is ready to kill somebody. The oh. very, the very next episode. Wow. And let me tell you something. By the way, this superhero that he becomes, that shit didn't sit well with me either. He he plays a superhero chicken man or uh, mother clucker, a mother clucker, who goes around shitting eggs on people. He got his powers by being bitten by some radioactive fried chicken. Mm. A black man got his powers from, from radioactive fried chicken. Get the f out of here with that. That sounds like some hillbillies right before waiting for the Klan meeting and drinking too many beers and like, throwing <laughs> ideas around. Yeah, yeah. And then you get this. Yeah. You know, uh, they got these, they got about three Wendy Williams jokes. I'm like, I don't, first of all, it, that didn't, that was ill-timed. 
Oh, there's yeah. some very dated yeah. stuff. In oh. episode six, they reference Jurassic Park, uh, Braveheart, and uh, Reservoir Dogs. It's like, what the mm. f is this doing? Here? How, how, how long have you been working on this show? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they do the same <laughs> Jurassic Park joke everybody else does. The goddamn water in the yeah. uh, on the on the dashboard trembling. You know, it's like And I guess Terminator 2 also is on top of the car. Yeah. Is there a, a say hello to my little friend joke? Oh, that's next season. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give him time. <laughs> There's three Wendy Williams jokes in there. It's like shit, all right. That that wouldn't even that, that wouldn't even be funny if everything was cool with her, but it's like, boy, y'all time that shit. Y'all, y'all can cut this out before y'all know Wendy Williams. Everybody made fun of Wendy Williams. All of us. I shouldn't have done that. Right, Not right. Not good times. <laughs> at least I give them that. They had the balls to stick with. We're going to put this joke in here anyway. Or you're too lazy to just take it yeah, out. Yeah, that, yeah. I feel this is unnecessarily gory. There's a lot of violence in here. It's gross. Uh, and, then, and, the, and the way they ended this show, it is the worst cliffhanger I've I've seen. It's based on an old reference. An old reference. That, 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 some, I mean, if I told you what the joke was, I can't do it right now, but if I told you what they were referencing, you think Jurassic Park and Braveheart is old. But if I told you what they were referencing, and they're proud of it too, they reference this old show, and they look at the camera like, oh, hey, we clever. Hey, hey, hey. I'm like, no, nah, not really. Oh, no, nah, don't, don't, like y'all did something. You didn't do a goddamn thing. Despite all that, I, I was, I was willing to give this a low rental. But some things kept bothering me, man. While that social commentary is commendable, sometimes even clever, the show still enjoys, it delights, it relishes in getting humor from these stereotypes. Mm -hmm. The whole time. That, that's yeah. its fallback, like you yeah. said. Black, all these black stereotypes for humor, man. Uh, like I told you, Junior becomes a superhero from fried chicken. Uh, the drug dealing baby now that is something I just could not ignore. All right, I just could not let that slide. That you know, first of all, the baby acting like a human joke—that's that's old. You know, that's just another Stewie. Right, right. And Stewie got old. And by the way, we started to get a little uneasy when they when they were doing Rollo from uh, the Cleveland mm -hmm. show. Even that show was kind of teetering on some stereotypical shit. But that was funny, at least though that show at some points. Yeah, I don't know. I never watched the show really, but I, I you know, I'm sure. Uh, you know. it, it, it could be funny and sometimes. No, actually, no, I saw some of the Cleveland show. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, there, it's, there were some genuine jokes in there that yeah. were well-timed. I ain't gonna lie. Cleveland's voice makes me laugh. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. No, 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 no. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. There's some funny stuff yeah. in there. It, but Although, like, Rollo made me a little uncomfortable. I was like, whatever, man. But, uh, but you know, the thing with this, uh, the thing with this drug-dealing baby, I, uh, who does the voice? Slink Johnson, wasn't it? Uh, I don't uh, know his name. Oh, the, the guy I, from GTA. Yeah, I like his Gerald Sling Johnson. I like his voice for the baby. I think he does a great performance, but there's no real statement, no arc. There's no commentary about how poverty forces people to sell drugs. Mm. You know, there's there's nothing to say. It's it, you know all they're doing is saying you know this baby deals drugs because blacks are predisposed to dealing drugs if you're poor, even as a baby. And it's all just played up for laughs. There's no all the social commentary they're doing here. They don't do nothing with that shit. Well, plus that that's a concept that's kind of hard to wrap your mind around unless they really do something with it, and they yeah. don't. Yeah, and like I said, not to mention all these hood rats and hoochie mamas and and gang bangers in here and everything. You know, I'm not saying I'm not saying these stories don't need to be told as long as inequality and there's you know and uh. You know, disproportionate poverty deal. You know, it's, it's, it exists with black people. You know, we, we'll have these stories to tell. But maybe I would find this slightly funny if the entertainment business. You know, I've said this all the time, and this is this is off all your thought. I was being nitpicking. Oh, you always got to get racial. Oh, Corey, looking you. You seeing things that ain't there. Now you see what I'm talking about with this right here. This is the kind of shit you get if you don't speak up for yourself. And you get black people doing it. Mm -hmm. You get black people brought into it thinking this is good to put out there. You know, the entertainment business, you know, we we, we still see ourselves mostly for our hood stories, our struggle stories, and for our stereotypes. Things are changing, but those images are still what the rest of the world sees from us. This shit is going to go to Japan. This shit is going to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. This is what they're going to see, and this is what they're going to about us. And I know this because I've heard people tell me to my face, well, I thought most black people like that over there. Man, Jesus. Nah, I know what the f I'm talking about. 
And this is exactly the kind of stuff you get right here. I, as much as I'll see some good qualities in this show, knowing that this is going to be going out to the rest of the world and knowing that we still, you know, this is still mostly what we get. This is still what the entertainment industry gravitates towards. Oh, man, off with that. You know, and not to mention, this has been done before, except it was done better. This was done years ago in the 90s. Eddie Murphy did this very same thing. And he did it a whole lot better. It was a show called The PJs. It was so... Oh, The PJs was fantastic. Yeah, it was so much more creativity yeah, going yeah, on with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's no. and really funny. Take this money. No! Need help from nobody. No! <laughs> <laughs> the animation was better. So much the, more artistic the, the, integrity yeah. just from that little clip. The performances were better. The jokes were better. The stories were better. I, you know, these days, back then, that's then. These days, I'm kind of tired of every show. Even I mean, we see it even with shows that are well-meaning, where the the you know the black father, the patriarch, oh, we got to talk like this, and that's what every either everybody talks like gang members or thugs, or talk talk like old Sambo in this show that we got here. <laughs> you your granddaddy teach you how to play pool like that? Well, come on over here and try to win some of this money so you can pay with. You know, I'm tired of that shit too. Maybe, maybe we should start doing that. No, <laughs> no, we shouldn't. Maybe we should be a bigger, bigger, bigger following. <laughs> I mean, that's what Hollywood wants, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Well, I ain't getting it from me. I'm, I would give this a you. The only reason why I'm not is because of some of the stuff that they honestly tried to do here that I thought were good ideas. But it's very much close to a with this. And uh, and I should do it because, you know, like I said, we shouldn't be putting this out here to the world like this, man. Not at this point. Not when we still have... Not when we still have all these other stories and images and, and aspects to us other than this. Mm -hmm. You know, I just, it's, it's, it's what I meant when I say this kind of shit sickens me, man. You know, but yeah, I'll give it a, if I can do this, I'll just give it a very low sum of bullshit. How about that? I'm surprised to hear you say that. I mean, for me, it was some old bullshit that was flirting with being a you. And it's, it's somewhere in between there. But like, all I'd say is don't watch this. Don't support this. Netflix, do better. <laughs> like, this is ridiculous, dude. Super uncreative. Go back to the drawing board. F you with this, man. Waste of time. You know, some of y'all not going to watch this. And I don't think it really. If you watch it, I mean, will there be highlights for you there? Probably. But, I, you know, you don't have to. If you didn't want to watch it before, nothing's going to really be there for you if you try to watch it now. Even the stuff I'm saying is positive. It's not going to be anything there for you. I, I, so I'm, I, if y'all want to know some of the ending on this, because you, you, you want to hear this. Oh, I definitely want to hear it. I would just say that, listen, I I felt like this was uh, it's certainly a low sum of bullshit, if not a f you, uh, from the two episodes I saw. And I hadn't seen the, the episodes that you say had something positive. But I guess it turns out I did watch the third one and that didn't move the needle for me at all. Uh, so I have to stand by my, my original rating. But just... Every time watching this, I I just couldn't help but think, you know who does this so, so much better? What was that? Bruce W. Smith with The Proud Family. It's that same thing yeah. where you get to know the characters. He gets into the different uh, issues, but still makes an entertaining and smart show. And had this been in his hands, he would have been able to do something that... Could have had some of this, but still would have brought in some of the original flavor to it and made something like, all right, it's it's the proud family for adults. And this is just um, shit for nobody. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll tell you the ending of it. Please. Yeah. R Reggie ends up becoming a cop because he loses his job or, or he loses his cab. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to even tell you how you, you know, you don't need to know. Anyway, he loses his cab. So he, he goes out for another job. The only job he's smart for is to be a cop. He gets a white partner. They do the whole, you know, how b police brutality works and how white cops are, you know, how they treat, you know, black people and white people different and whatnot. You know, it's some of the stuff we've seen before. Some of it's relevant. Some of it's interesting. Some of it's not so funny. Anyway, uh, Junior becomes a gang member because he wants to hook up with this girl because she's in a gang with her brother. Um, so... The gang, the leader of the gang says, all right, you got to prove yourself. Of course, he has to go out and kill the, the leader of the, of, the, of the rival gang, a guy named Durag. How creative. Anyway, uh, he goes out to kill Durag. And the girl is like, you, ain't, you don't have to do this. Don't do this. And he's like, no, man, well, I got to do this. He goes, so, and, <laughs> so she, she says, fine. And she just disappears. Turns out in order to stop him, she's going to cripple him. So she's on a rooftop with a sniper gun. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he's on his. And meanwhile, Reggie shows up because he gets a call about, you know, uh, they, they get a call about something going down. So he goes over there and he, and he doesn't want anybody in the hood to know he's a cop. So he doesn't want his son to know that he's there. Mm -hmm. But he goes up right behind his son. And um, and then there's a gunshot that rings out. Turns out Reggie's on the ground bleeding and whatnot. They try to make it a little a little serious at first, but then you realize, oh, he just got shot in the ear. Okay. And uh, and and so now we're trying to figure out. He doesn't know who shot him, and and so he's looking at the camera talking because his name is Junior. He told everybody, "Don't call me Junior. Call me Jr. I'm not Junior." And then at the end, they're like, "He's like, who? Sh but who shot me? Who shot Junior? Who shot Jr? How many of y'all know that reference?" Nope. How many? You don't know that reference, you, do you? There's no way you'd know that reference. Yeah. How many of y'all know what that is from? Tell me, chat. And don't and don't wait for don't look it up. Don't wait to answer. Tell me how many of y'all know what that is from. Tell me what y'all know. Who shot JR? Name that show. Some people say some people got a complete a dynasty. Some people got it. <laughs> so I'll probably That's close. That's <laughs> close. Dallas. But a lot of people don't know that. And if you did, you're like, why are you going way back way there? Way back. And that's not even, oh, and when they do it, they look at the camera. Who shot JR? Huh? Huh? Uh-uh. Yeah, they did. They look right at the camera. Huh? Y'all get that? Huh? You know, I was like, no, man, get the hell on, get the hell on out of here with that. Yeah, okay, here's what's funny about that. They're counting on the audience who originally watched Good Times, because that's when the whole who shot JR was a huge thing. Yeah. That huh? audience has tuned out by the time you got to the last yeah, episode. that audience never started watching. <laughs> yeah. That audience from the beginning said, F*** this show, I'm not right. watching this. For good reason. Yeah, why would I watch this? So y'all are playing to nobody. <laughs> that, that ending makes no sense. It doesn't. How the hell with this, man? Somebody's I'm 51, I barely remember that. I, I remember, I'm like, I know y'all didn't. I know y'all didn't get in that time machine and go way back there like that. Get the hell on out of here. And they almost do something interesting with that junior character because you they the best artwork comes from that character. <laughs> yeah. And and oh, they don't yeah, yeah, yeah. and they don't explore that at all. And like they just like drive off a cliff to just like, yeah, he's a gangster, actually. It's like, why? Like, yeah. the story was right there. Like, they're talking about OnlyFans when they could have had him going on Fiverr doing like that. I'm not writing this show for you. See, this is why I need to get out of here, but when I got a chance, because uh, I'm getting, I'm thinking about other things. No, this show. Yeah, yeah thank and, you. And I'm, gonna tell, job done. and I'm gonna tell you why, because I just thought of this. I want you to. I want, I want to show I mean, you something. Ending. Well, <laughs> based on that ending, I just had to repeat that. Like, what the? F are you talking about? No. <laughs> It was no. almost a rental. Get out of here. No, no one bought that. No, no. It, you know, at one point before I started getting to those last two episodes, I was like, you know, I'll give it a low rental for effort right here. And then it just, it's, well, it just slowly drove off a cliff. <laughs> but let me, and I mean, kaboom, exploded when it hit the ground. <laughs> but let me, man, let me show y'all something here. I just want to let you know, I'm going to take good care of Gray. <laughs> Who is this I'm about to kill? So... If y'all notice, there's been all kind of cursing in the trailer. And I mean, they drop F-bombs, MF-bombs, and titties, and say all kind of thing, things in here. But uh, they they bleep out the N-word. And that's just not for the trailer. They do that in the show. Yeah. So what? Out, out of all this, out, out of all these stereotypes that you're showing, out of all this stereotypical humor that you were just taking delight in, you're going to have the nerve to bleep out the N-word. After you say all this other stuff. Right, right. No, hell no, hell no. No, no, you don't get to do that. No, 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 the hell with you. But the only reason I challenge somebody on this is if they don't understand how black people might feel about this. They might be like, well, I thought it was funny, you know? I mean, cause I hear, I got, I got into a discussion with somebody. You're gonna, you're gonna meet those people who are gonna say, well, I mean, they make fun of everybody. Yeah. Oh, every, everybody has stereotypes. Like I was talking to a guy in a bar one day, you know, he slowly revealed that he's one of these. He says, you know, I'm a I'm I don't subscribe to any party, but I'm kind of leaning towards these thoughts right like, ah, you know, they talk about poverty. Everybody's poor. And I was like, oh, never mind, man, we're drinking. Just stop. You know, just, yeah, just, just stop. I don't want to talk about this. I, I only get mad at the people who are like, man, you should just be happy for any black people doing anything. Yeah. It's like, oh That's yeah, selling us out, huh? Okay. Yeah. Well let me sell go. us out. Be happy for that too. Well, as that dude said, maybe I should just buck dance for you then. Yeah, give me some old hands clapping right there. Well, you made it to the end of the video. That must mean you really like what we do. So if you do, check out these other videos just like this one. 
check out our other YouTube channels and subscribe to join our wonderful Toasty community. And as always, stay toasty. <laughs>